Hey, hello and welcome. Today we're just going to be navigating incident management in Azure Sentinel. Uh, let's jump straight into it. Azure Sentinel is a service or component in Microsoft Azure. So if you find it, you would need to search it in Azure, you know, at the top section over here. Um, okay, great. So once you've logged in, on the main screen that you will see is pretty much a dashboard. You can see the overview of the alerts and of course, over time, the logs ingested along with it. Um, on the right, we can see we have the most recent incidents. And of course, on the left, we have our sub menus. To get it started with the uh, incident management, we can click on incidents on the left over here. Um, and wow, we can see that over the last 30 days, these are the incidents that have been triggered. Amazing. Or created nonetheless. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. I've clicked on one of the incidents. Um, great. Let's see. Awesome. We can see now that over here on the right, this is probably the incident management pane. So if we click on this section over here, this will allow us to assign the incident. Better I assign it to myself. And of course, right next to that, we can see that there is a, another selection that allows us to determine whether this is new, active, or closed. So when it comes to incident management, then of course, if there's more than one analyst or person overviewing the environment, this would make perfect sense because this will allow them to uh, see if the incident is new or active, meaning still under investigation, or of course, along with your filtering, it could still be closed. To the right of that, we've got the tab for the severity. Uh, it's broken down into four categories, informational, low, medium, and high. This, of course, makes good for fault management, sorry, incident management. Um, when it comes to, you know, escalating matters and so forth, you could change it. See, I could change this to medium, you know, and of course the color code would of course change. Below this, we've got the description box, which tells us about what the analytics searches for, or pretty much more about the incident. Below that, we've got, you know, certain regions, which allows us to click on the events, alerts, and bookmarks. I'll expand on that a bit later. And below this, of course, we've got the entities mapped, which tells us, of course, the entities that are involved, be it the hosts or the perhaps email address in question, or perhaps maybe just something like a file name, you know. Also below this, we'd be able to see the analytic rule that this was generated from. Here we can see that this was create incidents based on Azure Defender alerts. So that automatically tells us that these alerts or incidents come through from Azure Defender. They automatically get generated and create incidents in Azure Sentinel. Below this, we've got the incident link. Um, this, of course, if you wanted to copy it to clipboard and send it to anyone else, this automatically uh, you know, would take you directly to this particular incident. Of course, note the incident number 15. This is the link to the direct incident. Okay, and below that, we've also got the comment section, which allows us to place comments indefinitely. And of course, if you want to remove those comments, click on the total button, and this will take you to the section where you could manage the comments, of course, and you could delete them or edit them from there. Going back to our previous screen that we were at, below that, we will also see the button for viewing full details. Let's have a look at what that does quickly. So this is probably going to tell us a bit more about what's going on with this particular incident. All right. Now we can see that that button is, of course, changed to investigate. Let's go ahead and click on that and see what happens. Of course, now it's broken up the entities in a map format, which gives us a great visual that allows us to see what else is going on over here. You know, we've got, you know, each entity, the file types, we've even got the uh, name of the host. And wow, guess what? If we click on this, uh, we could, of course, you know, see the hash value, the algorithm, etc. We could also click on the host and we could see more information about the host, the, uh, the OS version, the subscription ID, etc. Towards the far right, there's also a button for the timeline, which gives us a breakdown of the events in a series of time. Uh, and below that, we've also got the info button, um, which again tells us a bit more about that. We've got more entities that we can click on. Uh, of course, you could break this up and you know arrange it in a way that is, of course, you know best for you. As you can see, I've zoomed in and zoomed out over here. All right, we've also got insights. You know, which tells us a bit more of the actions on the accounts, event logs cleared on hosts, group editions, you know, so 
this goes into quite a bit of detail when it comes to fault management and so forth. Of course, when you are looking for, you know, a particular trigger alert, you know, if you're doing an investigation, of course. Uh, below that, we've got process executions over time, Windows sign-in activity, sign-ins over time. You know, this, of course, is quite expansive as far as the investigation is, of course, concerned. But this will, of course, allow you further on the line. If we look here at the top section, we can see a bit more about what's being displayed. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it on an overview level of what we're doing. If we go back to the main screen, we could also see the actions button. This action button, well, we've got the investigate button. We can create automation rules. I won't go into what automation rules are right now. That's a completely different video. Um, below that, we've also got an option to create teams. That's, of course, another video. What we are doing here is we are just navigating fault. Um, sorry, incident management. Uh, let's click on alerts that will, you know, probably take us to the actual analytic and alert that triggered this very incident in the first place. All right. So, you know, this generated the alert. Let's drop down this box over here. We can see some more information like the description, the provider name, the vendor name. All right. There's even remediation steps in this subsection. Let's drop down the extended properties. All right. And um, let's see what else we have in here. Whoa, great. So this tells us a bit more about the threat information, the files, and even also in these entities and so forth. Here we've got more information. It tells us it's been categorized as virus. Um, below that, we've got extended links. We can also see here that this takes us straight to Security Center. Um, the exact link that you would, you know, the, uh, the exact alert that triggered in Security Center. Um, yeah, that would take us right over there. And of course, we'd be able to investigate even further. So, yeah, further down, you know, it just tells us more information about the entity that was compromised and so forth. Um, type, it's a security alert. But yeah, this is, of course, one type of incident or one type of alert. You know, we do have several. And of course, the detail in what triggered the alert is, of course, quite different. All right, so going back to the main screen, we could also check on the entity behavior, all right? This allows us to punch in, you know, any entity that we think, you know, is part of our investigation. You know, we could just maybe type in a couple of key letters and whoa, there we go, automatically. The, uh, this is populated, you know, with different entities. So I could click on that. I could select either one of those that have appeared, all right? And what this will do, it will tell me about the events and alerts over time, but only pertaining to this entity. All right. If we look at the top section here, time and range, um, we should be able to see, of course, you know, something that allows us to adjust or to go back for the you know, up until the last 30 days. So that's pretty cool. So we'll be able to see the events and alerts over time for the last 30 days. So if you wanted more in-depth view of the entity that you're busy investigating, this would be the place. Also on the left-hand side, there's a subsection for threat hunting. Uh, this, of course, you know, if you are aware of, you know, a particular incident or alert that looks very suspicious, if there's some type of attack or perhaps some type of a penetration test that is being done uh, in the environment, this would be the place to start because at the top of the year, we've also got a, a button that allows us to click on run all queries. So these queries uh, are dedicated particularly just for threat hunting. So this will automatically run all the queries if there is some sort of a threat in the environment, as you can see here. It is counting away, you know, the amount of queries that are being run. And that's just a quick overview of threat hunting. If we go back to the main screen, you'll look on the left hand side. We've got the section for the logs. This, of course, allows us to type in whichever KQL queries we desire, you know, be it something from the uh, sign in logs, but we could build queries from here and do a search on, you know, whatever it is that we need to. But this is also one of the tools that you would use in your investigations. All right, and that is pretty much it, how we would, you know, manage uh, incidents in Azure Sentinel. I hope the video is informative. Yeah, leave us a like. Peace.